let's move on to our 14, Caleb. Who do we have at number four? The Miami Heat. Raise the roof. Tell them why we had the Miami Heat at four. Because Miami's awesome and Floridans are the best. Yes, partially. And because Miami, Miami made it to the NBA Finals out of the East. We couldn't bump them down below a couple teams in the East. So, they're the team in the East. They're, they're the number one team in the East as of – no, they're the number two team in the East as of now. So, pretty good team. Uh, Off-season-wise, their off-season might not be done. Certain big-name player that's on the trade market. But they brought in that precious achievement from the draft, James Harden. Oh, there's no chance James Harden goes to know. But now Houston's talking to different teams. And I really doesn't team. want that bum. Go ahead. Maybe. They brought in Precious and Chiwa. I feel like a culture fit, you know, hard-nosed guy. I feel like that's a really good fit for them. Avery Bradley, another defense first guy. Mo Harkless, okay defender. A um, couple of undrafted <laughs> Oh, don't, you can't just swipe over Avery Bradley like that. I think Avery Bradley was a big loss for the Lakers this past year because, yeah, in the bubble it didn't look like a big deal, but defensively he is a really good player. Yeah, he's now he's not the same player. He's lost a step. Los yeah, Angeles. He's not the same player, but I'm saying Miami gets these type of guys. and It is a culture fit. They love the research. He did, he did get accused of raping a girl once, so culturally it fits perfectly in Miami. Um, what they lose? Jay Crowder, Derek Jones Jr., Solomon Hill. I mean, that's more of a contract win. Um, and Kyle Alexander, which, you know, looking at their offseason, they, they didn't get worse. They definitely did not get worse. I think the only real loss they had was Jay Crowder because Derek Jones Jr. didn't play much for them in the playoffs. He had his moments, but – in terms of guys that played, it was really just Jay Crowder. And you replaced him with Avery Bradley, Mo Harkless, who, I don't know. You, you People have different opinions on Mo Harkless at this point in his career. Some people think he's underrated. Some people think he's just average. I'm indifferent on him. But I think that they had a pretty good offseason. I agree. I think their offseason was not too bad and not great by any means. That roster is exciting to me because it's deep. They have – one through five, five through ten. They have a good bench. Losing Jay Crowder, we talked about it. I don't think that that's too big of a loss, but he played well in the finals last year and in the overall bubble. I thought he did a good job. Derek Jones Jr., I really like the pickup for Portland, but he didn't play much, like you said, in Miami. So they're not losing out much on him. That roster stayed the same, and I think the main part of that is they're trying to save money and whatever money they can save because – Obviously, with paying Goran Dragic, they got him back. Goran, Goran was a monster in the bubble, dude. That guy was fun to watch. And I'm happy he didn't get a serious injury because the poor guy was working his butt off. You saw how he upset was he was. He crying before the one game because he yeah. wanted to come back, and they told him, like, it's just not safe. He was, in his, he was in tears. There was a source that came out with the report that he was just like, man, why me at this time, right? You know, because it's like, why at the finals is my first time in my career? Super unfortunate, but good for him. I love to see him get that contract back. They got Tyler Hero, and that's been in the trade talks a lot. We've heard rumors of him, like you said, even mm -hmm. being in trade rumors with James Harden. And that's, that's a little bit extreme to me. It shows me that that bubble really kind of overrated some players. For yeah, example, we talked about did. Jamal Murray and now Tyler Hero. Like a lot of these players that, yeah, they, they might be taking that jump, are, are, are they really, or, or was that like a bubble fluke? We, we don't know. We can't confirm for sure. Mm -hmm. It'll, I mean, we might not even be able to tell after this year. This year is going to be kind of like another mini bubble with each arena being completely empty. It's going to be weird. Um, I don't know. Duncan Robinson, he can shoot, man. And it's, it's like one of those things where, like, you know why he's on the court. He's strictly out there to shoot. But he still gets open every single time up the court. He's getting a look somehow, some way. And the thing I really like about him is he's a really underrated passer coming off screens. If he knows that two guys are chasing him, he instantly knows to dump it down to the screen or whenever he's cutting to the basket. And I think that's really underrated because shooters really can't just be shooters out there. They have to have some other skill. And I think Duncan Robinson has that, and it's very underrated. And it helps him kind of get open looks again because they know that he can pass if, if it's there. I like Duncan Robinson. I, I think – I mean, he's older. He's 26. But, I mean, is 26 really old for a shooter specifically? Ray Allen made it to 38. Steph Curry and Klay Thompson, they're going to make it longer in their careers. 
shooting really doesn't get old. You know what I mean? I agree. And you look at that roster, Duncan Robinson, Tyler Hero, two really good shooters, and both of them played very poorly in the finals. They were not able to handle that pressure. And now that you put them in the position where, hey, last year you guys played some tough, tough matchups. They played against Boston. They played against the Lakers in the finals. And that was a tough matchup for them because, hello, LeBron has been there how many times? LeBron knows everything. And That's my thing with LeBron. Like, he, he's, re- he's played every single type of look you can give him. He knows what guys are out there for, what plays are going to be ran for him, especially for Spolstra because he played for him. He knows – You know what I mean? He played with Ray Allen in Miami. He knows how they're going to use Duncan Robinson in a similar way, coming off screens and everything. He kind of just knows what was going to happen. And I think that's unfair to really judge Hero and Robinson off that series specifically. But I don't know. You still got to perform. But it almost is because they're young. And even Kawhi, if you remember in the finals, the year they lost to the Heat, Kawhi missed, I believe it was one of two free throws. If he made both, Series over, they win the championship. People forget mm-hmm. that. I remember that time, and again, this is not a disrespect. you got to take a shot at Kawhi, no, no matter what. We always Kawhi, take Abe. I love Kawhi, but that's why part of the reason why I love Kawhi is because he, in that moment, he was so young, and he played so well in that finals, but that moment, he couldn't handle it. Why? Because he mm-hmm. hasn't been there, and that's against a team, super team of Miami that should have won the championship a year ago. They had to win it that year. He missed one of two, and – Bang, Ray Allen makes a three. Game goes to overtime. You know what happens with the rest. Yeah. That's kind of what Tyler Hero, Duncan Robinson, really needed to do. They needed to experience, hey, I, I had to get my ass kicked in the finals by LeBron James. It happens. Yep. It happens to the I, best of all the players. Yep. Now you got to get back up. And I, I think they can get back up. I, I, feel like they're, I feel like they're a talented duo. And I think – I don't know. I'm excited for them. And, you know, what could their ceiling be this year? Conference finals? I'm, I'm just not sure – I mean, I know they beat Milwaukee, but I'm just not sure. You know what I mean? The bubble thing. It, I need to see them outside of the bubble play each other one time. Well, because we're not going to see that this year. You're going to get a lot of that. That's why I, I think Miami has a chance to get back to the finals. They yeah. do have a chance. If Brooklyn is not healthy, I think the only team that can challenge Brooklyn is Miami. And the reason I say that is because Miami has – the, the experience at this point, they have the bubble experience. And this is what the NBA is right now. This is what we're going to get. We're going to get no fans and empty arenas. And, yeah, that's going to be a lot of the same of what we saw in the bubble. Why? Because a lot of these players – I mean, I will say one thing, though. Travel. We don't know what type of player is going to get affected by travel. I don't think the Miami Heat really will be. With Duncan Robinson, Tyler Hero, a guy like Bam Adebayo who just got a max extension – Another young big in the league that's hoping to be one of the best bigs in the league in the, at one point. Those three guys are super young guys. They can handle this travel. They can handle the bubble because it's not pressure to them as much mm-hmm. as maybe playing in a full arena. So I think Miami has a chance to be back there, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. The rest of that roster, again, we, we, I don't know how big of a loss Crowder, Derek Jones Jr. are. I don't think it's much, but – We'll see how Goron is this year coming back. Jimmy, hopefully he's the same player he was in the bubble because Jimmy Butler was acting different in the bubble. So we'll find out. Let's go to our buy or sell. First up. From the discipline and the dedication that everyone has and buys into from day one of training camp, um, you could just feel the energy um, and the intensity throughout practice. Guys were just locked in and, um, you know, pushing each other from the first day and they said, you know, there's no drop offs. This is the way we practice every single time we lace our shoes up. And, um, you know, it's just been a a great environment to be a part of and, um, you know, having an opportunity to play with, you know, all these guys in practice and and push each other and and get better throughout these three days. Mr. Wash guy, according to Caleb Miller is Avery Badley. There he is. Caleb, my question to you, buy or sell? Miami Heat have the best culture in the NBA. Bye. Um, preseason last year, people were thinking make the playoffs, first round exit. That's what they were putting Miami at. They came out of there. They came out hot, and they made the finals. And I think a lot of that goes to their culture. I think the way that players get a mindset when they go there. You know what I mean? Duncan Robinson was undrafted. A lot of those guys were late-round guys that were picked. They have a culture there, and it works for what they want, and I think they have the best culture. I don't think you can really make an argument there's any other team. 
I agree. I mean, you got Pat Riley, you got Eric Spolster, who's been there for what twenty something years. Now he started off as a video coordinator, and literally everybody on that team from front office down was underdogs. You know what I mean? Like guys yeah. that weren't supposed to be there, and they're they're there now, and I. I like the way that their roster is constructed, man. I mean, look at it. Bam Adebayo, a guy that was underrated in the draft. Duncan Robinson, undrafted. Tyler Hero, late lottery pick. These guys are all guys that shouldn't have been good, and they're all good. Why? Because Miami knows how to develop. They developed Derrick Jones Jr. really well. I remember watching him in summer league. He came to Sacramento. All he was was a dunker. Now his game is really expanded, and that's the type of guys Miami makes. So – this is an easy one. I'm going by. I don't think there's really much to argue. If you have another argument, please let us know because I would love to know who else you guys think has a better coach than them. I don't see another team. The best team I can think of is, I mean, maybe the Warriors, but I, I don't I don't think their culture is good. Forcing players to come yeah. back off of injuries is not yeah, a I good look to me. I don't think they're really a culture league. Like, you know what I mean? I don't think they're like an image for culture. I think Really, whenever you say culture, I think people think of heat because they even – like, that's even their hashtag on Twitter is heat culture. Like, they're, they're so committed to that culture. It's ridiculous. And you know what? It works for them. I like it. Yeah, well, you called it rape culture, so we'll ignore that. Next up, let's go to Bam Adebayo. I'm just trying to become an all-around better player. Uh, you know, my nickname in, 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 uh, in the organization is No Ceiling. So uh, – uh, that gives you a, a, a point of where I want my game to be. You know, I want to have no ceiling and be the best player that I could be and win this city a championship. There's Bam, excited to return this year and have a big year. Caleb, good question here. A little bit interesting one. I want to ask you, by yourself, Bam will be the best big in the league by the end of the year. I'm going to sell. Um, I just think Jokic has separated himself significantly. I think a lot of that has to do with the team around him, but I mean, that's kind of the whole point of, you know what I mean? Developing a team, put the right guys around each other. I think Jokic is the number one. I don't know if I would take Bam over MB just yet, but I think third, I think he could pass up Cat. I think Cat has now became a guy who's empty stats kind of, even though I love Cat. I, I want him in Boston one day, but just I feel like it's empty stats and it's hard to take a guy with empty stats over a guy like Bam who puts up stats fills up the stat sheet he, like he wouldn't get three triple doubles last year even besides the triple doubles he puts up significant stats do you remember the block that he had against the Celtics that pretty much yeah won like year? it's high impact plays I mean he's he's all over the place at the right times and I think it's hard to overlook that so I'd say guaranteed top three next year maybe shot it second, but I'm not going to be able to take him over Jokic just yet. Honestly, I can't disagree with you there. I'm going to go sell as well. Bam has all the talent in the world to be the best big in the league. He can dribble. I saw a report that came out last year. Pat Riley said, I want to make Bam out of bio into pretty much like a point guard, right? He wanted to make him into like a point center. And they talked to Bam in the summer league that, hey, we want you playing pretty much point guard. And he was bringing the ball up the floor because he's a good playmaker. Why? And it's not because he's one of those guys where it's like, hey, we have such a good culture. Our culture is we force you to become something you're not. No, it's Bam has that skill set. He can be a playmaker. He can have the ball in his hands and dribble, kind of like a guy like Harry Giles. He can do those things. So it's like, why not let him bring the ball up the floor? Let him play make. Let him do those things. And he has the ability to be the best big in the league, I would say, as early as next year. By the end of this year, it's still tough to me. I agree with you. Nikola Jokic is just too good. He's too damn good. And it's going to be hard to pass up a guy like that. Last one. I don't really pay attention to the outside. They're not in here. They don't got Miami across the chest on their practice jerseys or across the chest that we compete in these games. Me of all people, I can care less about what the outside thinks. I think we got a lot of people in this organization on this team. They don't give a damn either. There's Jimmy Buckets saying that he doesn't listen to any of the outside noise about people doubting the heat. And I know you just saw it, Caleb. Everyone was saying Miami shouldn't have been there, especially after game one. They're getting absolutely tarnished for being – in the finals, they were getting embarrassed for just making it. 
So my question to you, buy or sell, Miami going to the finals was a fluke. I'm going to sell. I mean, you can make the argument they had an easy matchup round one or something, or like they got, but like they beat the number one seed. And like I mentioned earlier on the Celtics breakdown, people thought the Celtics were just going to run through Miami and they got through. Sure. They didn't put up a great fight in the finals. I mean, Jimmy Butler went off, but like the other guys, they struggled a little bit. Bam was hurt. Goron was hurt. But here's the thing. I find it hard to believe that a team that makes the finals can be considered a fluke when they run through the number one team, number three team. And it's like, you got to give them credit somewhere. You know what I mean? Like you can't always make excuses. I think that them going to the finals was deserved. They went through Giannis, who many people consider was a consensus pick to make the finals out of the East. So no, I'm I'm gonna sell that. Well, when you play the MVP, the back-to-back MVP, the Defensive Player of the Year, the guy who is considered the best player in the league by far, how are you not able to beat him? Miami hasn't had any experience. Milwaukee has been in the freaking playoffs year after year. They've been in the conference finals and stuff like that. So to me, I just don't see it. I I don't see why people are saying they're a fluke. They were not a fluke. I can see the argument for, oh, well, it's a bubble, blah, blah, blah. That if they were normal, then they wouldn't have been there. Okay, that's that's an whatever argument. You, it is what it is at this point. Complaining about it being a bubble, well, you know what? Then complain about LeBron's Mickey Mouse ring. All right, moving on. No, I'm kidding. But anyways, my point is people overrate the fact that it's so easy to get to the finals because they saw LeBron get to the finals so many times, but it's not that easy, especially given how tough the East is now. I want to see what Miami does this year. I'm excited to see what they do. It's an interesting roster and it's definitely going to be an interesting season. They have a lot on their shoulders to prove because a lot of people think that they had a fluke and people, unlike us, the majority of people think that they shouldn't have been there. So we'll find out what happens with them.